So in science and in other things, I suppose, we deal with some very large numbers, like the number of stars there are in the universe, and some very small numbers, like uh, in terms of a meter, how big is an atom? That's a very small number. So in this class, you're going to need to be able to kind of wrestle with um, big and large numbers. And we do that in science using scientific notation. So I need to talk you through that if you haven't been exposed to that. Uh, so, for instance, we have this 12 billion 300 million kilometers. Now, we could write it like that, but it gets a little bit tedious and it's kind of easy to go cross-eyed figuring out how many zeros you have. That's a pretty large number. A small number would be like this in terms of a second. We have a fraction of a second, so uh, point zero 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 whatever. 4, 7, 2, 1 seconds, and it's just hard to kind of count those zeros. So we pack those two numbers, the large one and the small one, up using scientific notation. So you may have already been exposed to scientific notation before, and here I kind of on this slide kind of tell you the, the just of it, but uh, I want to go ahead and do an example of packing up, for instance, this big number in scientific notation. Now, if I were to ask you where is the decimal in that big number, you probably would say, well, it's probably right here, kind of after the zero that represents the ones place. This is ones, this is tens, this is hundreds, you know, one, uh, one thousand, etc. So we have an implied decimal. We say implied because it's not really written. Okay, so we have an implied decimal right there. So if I want to pack this number up, I'm going to think of the decimals being right there, and I'm going to move it over until I get a number between that is 1 or greater, but not quite 10. So here we go. Let me grab purple. It's going to start right here. I'm going to 1, 2, 3, oops, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I'm going to go one more place right there between the 1 and the 2. How many places? I went 3, 6, 9, 10. So I went 10 places. So remember that number. So the number between that's 1 or greater but less than 10, to me, and we're going to call that the coefficient, is going to be 1.23. Hopefully you guys buy that. And so packing up scientific notation, that is the coefficient. And the exponent part looks like this, times 10 raised to the, what did I say, 10, raised to the 10th power. So here is the same number in scientific notation. Let's look at the other one. Now, I don't have to use your imagination for you guys to tell me that the decimal's right there. Okay. Now I'm going to again move it, but now I need to move it to the right in order to get a number between, that's at least 1, but not 10. So actually, this is my goal right here. I'm going to move it until I get it between the 4 and the 7. And I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I had to move it 9 places. So I write the coefficient, plate, the coefficient part, and it looks like 4.721. And then I write the exponent part times 10 raised to the, uh, what did I say? Drat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I said 9. Okay, so 10 raised to the ninth power, but since it's a small number, I'm going to go ahead and make that exponent 9. You can think of it that way, or sorry, make that exponent negative, so it's negative 9. You can think of it that way negative exponents, 10 raised to a power, it's negative if it's a small number, or you can say if you move the decimal place over to the, what is it, over to the right, you make it negative. If you moved it over to the left, it must have been a big number, and so it stays positive. So, again, when we're kind of talking about these parts, these right here, let me grab a green color, these are what we call the coefficient, coefficient, and this part right over here, that's called the exponent part. It's really not too hard, but it sure beats these numbers packed up over here, I think are a lot easier to the eyes than the other numbers, so kind of get used to doing that. 
So uh, let's do some examples. For this one, I think this is the one that we just did, and we'll do a few together, and then I'm going to pause it, and you have to do one yourself. Okay, so the implied, what we say implied decimals here, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, one more. Okay, so the exponent's going to be 10. So the coefficient is 1.23 times 10 raised to the 10th power. You buy that? I do. The next example you should have in your packets is this one. It's another big number. And um, looks like we got one more instead of uh, it's going to be one more power of 10. So let's see. The implied decimals here. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we're going 11 places, <coughs> um, so that'll be our exponent of 10, and it'll be positive, and our coefficient is 5.9145 times 10 to the, what did I say, 9 to 11, times 10 to the 11th, very good. One more example, okay, it's a smaller number, and again, the implied decimal is kind of right we call that actually, uh, well, it's right there. So it goes one, two, three. Only going to move it three places. That's what our power of 10 is going to be. So times 10 raised to the third. And the coefficient is 4.3. That's it. Okay, so there's a little decimal there. Now, uh, this is something new for me. So I hope this works for you. This class will have one way or another. Uh, what I call in-class assignment, or I might have called it quiz, I'm not sure. But you need to answer some questions that are kind of built into the, slot, the lecture. You can either do that here, and I'll give you account information, okay, so I can know you're doing it, or you can physically take your notebook, or your lecture printout slides, and write it down there and show it to me on lab day on Thursdays so that's your choice so go ahead and um, if you're doing it the video way go ahead and answer this question how do you pack up 101 comma 000 into scientific notation okay so we're back now let's pack this number up into scientific notation. It's a small number, and so I'm going to have to get on my spectacles and see how I can move that this decimal <coughs> over to get a number. It looks like my final number is going to be what? 4.721. We'll go ahead and write that down. 4.721 is my coefficient times 10 raised to a power, and it's going to be negative because it's a small number or I'm moving to the right, however you want to look at it. And it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's pretty easy. Cool. Is that what you got? Let's do another one together. We'll do two more together and then I'll turn you loose with uh, one kind of a quick question on your own. So here's the decimal. Looks like my number between uh, the, my coefficient is going to be 5.006 times 10 raised to a negative power and that negative power is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Not bad. They're kind of fun when you get started. And does this make sense then that the more negative the exponent of 10, the smaller the number that you're dealing with. The more positive the exponent of 10, the larger the number you're dealing with. So, okay, last one together. Uh, looks like, oops, looks like we've got a decimal right here. Um, looks like when I move it over, my coefficient is going to be what? 3.3 .3 times 10 raised to the negative power since we're moving it to the, to the right. And how many places? 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4. Not bad. Okay, so here's your chance. This will actually be for in-class or in-lecture credit. So take this uh, number and pack it up into scientific notation.